So these are the layers, eh? Yes, these are uh, our layer chicken. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper to produce these birds, mm -hmm. so that eventually means your margins, if you are intending to sell eggs, mm -hmm. you have higher margins. Ah, okay. Yes, compared to the regular systems. Uh, my name is Linda, mm -hmm. and uh, welcome to Ololo Farm. Okay. Yeah, so this Sunday. is the best destination you can get for your chicken products mm -hmm. and also other bird products like that. Okay. And uh, this is where most of our operations uh, stem mm -hmm. from the production uh, up to processing of chicken mm -hmm. that you're able to consume on the table yes. at the market. Yes. So uh, where are we here today? What are we learning today? Uh, today we are here to learn more about the principles of farming chicken and ducks okay. and uh, also how to make sure that we are being cost effective in production of our products mm -hmm. and also making sure that we understand the kind of health aspects that we need to be able to keep up with the poultry production as a general mm -hmm. and also how to run your farm sustainably mm -hmm. in a way that uh, is profitable for the overall operation of the farm. Nice. Yes. And uh, for someone watching and uh, they probably watch this and uh, hope uh, or wish they would uh, have an opportunity to visit the farm. Yes. So how do they do that? Uh, I think uh, first and foremost we are located just at the southern border of the National Park. Nairobi National Park. Yes. Yes. So you can uh, visit us via the National Park if you can. Yes. But uh, if you want to go the other way, you can just come through Rongai. Yes. And uh, we are about uh, 15 kilometers away from Rongai uh, town. Yes. Yes. So you're able to visit us, just make a reservation so that we can uh, prepare to receive you and also take you through the practices that we have. Okay. Yes. So also additionally, we have uh, some of our uh, pages on our uh, Instagram, yes. like Kololo Farm Kenya. Yes. We also have a very informative website, yes. Kololo Farm mm -hmm. and uh, Safari Lodge. Nice. Yes. So we also, as much as we are a farm, we're also a destination. So you're able to just book with us, come and stay and enjoy our delicious meals, and also just be around the farm and know how to operate things around there. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. So let's proceed to the Chicken. We start with the the chicks. Yes, yes we can. Exactly. Uh, we can start with the chicks as mm -hmm. we move on through ah. the whole process of production. Ah, okay. Uh, this is our brooding unit mm -hmm. where we do a lot of production of our chicks and uh, young ducklings. Okay. So this here is uh, our food bag. Yes. Where we make sure we have a disinfectant in place. Yes. So whenever you come in, always make sure you dip your feet in, mm -hmm. like so. Yes. This will make sure that you kill a lot of the bacteria and germs on your feet yes. before you can get into the house yes. and get in contact with the chicks. Okay. Yes. So it's... Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a, it's a huge room, eh? Yes. So here you have uh, chicks on uh, different stages. Yes. Okay. So we usually make sure that we stage our chicks into two sessions okay yeah so we will start at day one mm -hmm. in the brooder unit mm -hmm. where we raise our chicks mm -hmm. until they get to week three before we can move them out uh -huh. so for us we majorly look at how the market looks like okay yeah so we try to work as closely as possible with the most of uh, the the people we supply our products to okay yeah so a lot of the times you get a standard number of birds mm -hmm. because you know that the market is able to consume the numbers that you're giving. Okay. Yeah, so the market here will be majorly our Ololo Lodge. Yes. Then uh, whatever surplus we have, we are able to share out to other suppliers like uh, Greenspoon. Yes. And Zucchini. Yes. And also some other lodges that are interested in our products. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. Nice. So... I think uh, the other thing to make sure you do here mm -hmm. is to make sure that the vaccination schedule is right. Yes. So that one will help you to protect the birds from any diseases that may occur. Okay. And also in the long run, it mm -hmm. helps you uh, eliminate the use of an antibiotics. Okay. Yeah, because we as a farm mm. try as much as possible to avoid the use of antibiotics because of uh, some of the effects that we know uh 
a recurrent, yes. like uh, antimicrobial resistance. Okay. Yes. So we try as much as possible to make sure vaccines are done right at, on time. Okay. Yes. So, then uh, so, incidences of disease mm -hmm. are usually managed. Mm -hmm. In case we have any, we rarely have disease, but when we do, especially when it's a wet season, mm -hmm. we manage uh, the conditions naturally, so we do not really use antibiotics. Uh -huh. yes. yes. So uh, after the third week, yes. they proceed to the pastures? Yes. Let, so let's go see the pastures. Okay, so after the third week, we just uh, lift all the chicken out yes. and uh, transfer them to our mobile coops yes. that we are going to see in a Short one. Okay. Yes. So once we have the birds moved from the brooder, mm -hmm. we bring them out to movable coops. Yes. Like this here. Yes. Where they will uh, stay for the rest of their lives before we can now <laughs> move to processing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's a very basic setup. Yes. And uh, what we make sure we have here mm -hmm. is the right uh, feeding material. Yes. And uh, also make sure that you have uh, enough drinking water mm -hmm. for the birds. So you'll constantly be here just monitoring and making sure all of uh, the requirements are met for the birds. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes when it rains, you have to make sure you know how to manage your flock. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it rained here recently, so we had to make sure you just do some grass on the ground so that you can protect the birds from uh, excessive water that's uh, maybe flowing through. Okay. Yes. So how big is this structure? Uh, this should be 10 feet by around uh, 5. 10 to 5? Yes. Okay, and the height? Uh, the height is about uh, one and a half. This is what? One and a half meters. meters yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, how many birds can you fit in here? Uh, in here, you can do upwards of six hundred birds. Six hundred birds at a yes. go. Yes. Yes. And uh, so, for how long does it have to stay in one particular area before you move it to the next? Uh, we try to move the cages at least once every two days. Once every two. Days. So it was here uh, before, two days ago. Yes. And uh, for after two days you move to the next stage yes that's then, right then to the next yes so and this is the damage yes this is the damage that you can get yes uh it's not as pronounced <laughs> right now because uh we just had rains yes yes but uh you try to move it often mm -hmm. because uh you try to avoid the microorganisms that are there yes from affecting the birds okay and also, you're making sure that they can maximize on uh, the nutrients they can pick from the ground. Okay. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, insects, mm -hmm. some worms, mm -hmm. and also the green grasses mm -hmm. that the birds can feed on. So make sure the pasture is fresh mm -hmm. every now and then. Mm -hmm. That way, you're mm -hmm. making it easier for them to access these nutrients. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so this system, Yes. Uh, does it help with the the feed the feed consumption of the of the birds Ama, what is the essence of uh, moving your animals up? okay so having movable coops will help us a lot mm -hmm. in making sure that uh, the birds can uh, peck on the grass okay that way we are able to get some nutrients mm -hmm. and uh, it's also important because uh, we have insects yes. and sometimes worms mm -hmm just within the area. So they're able to forage mm -hmm. in as much as uh, we are providing them with feed. So this is uh, the very basic kind of setup that we have mm -hmm. for uh, the pasture raising system of birds. Mm -hmm. The birds are able to come in here once they're three weeks old. So they can grow out to a period of about eight or nine weeks mm -hmm. when we, we are ready to slaughter them for the market. Yes, so we also make sure here that we have enough uh, water yes. and also make sure that we have feed so that uh, we are able to promote the growth of the birds faster. Okay. Yeah, so this setup also allows for more airflow. Yes. So we have uh, very few problems to deal with ammonia in the housing. Okay. And uh, it also helps us reduce the risk of disease okay. because we rarely have uh, 
the chronic diseases like uh, the CRD, which is uh, respiratory in the buds. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, the hygiene is also on top notch. They yes. Are, they, are mo they are consistently moving. Yes. So when you consistently, consistently move the house, mm -hmm. you make sure that uh, whatever chicken waste that has been produced over that day mm -hmm. is uh, left behind for the grasses to be able to use it for germination. Yes. Then move to fresh pasture. So you're able to go through the process all over again. Okay. Yes. So I want to look at the, the, the feeds. Yes. Please come closer. So when the birds are here, mm -hmm. we we'll feed them on uh, finisher pellets. Mm -hmm. As you can see from what we have in these feeders. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do finish a pellet for the birds. Mm -hmm. Then uh, on top of that, we supplement with the uh, azola, yes. which we harvest from our ponds. Mm -hmm. And uh, this helps us with the protein content for the birds. Okay. So we can uh, partially reduce on uh, the use of feeds yes. from the shops. Okay. Yes. So obviously there's a lot of diversity on uh, what you're feeding your, your birds. Eh? Yes. So what does that exactly do to the, to, to the quality of uh, meat compared to... Uh, the, the ones fe being fed on uh, grain exclusively. Okay, so I think uh, from just a visi visi visible point of view, mm -hmm. as in something that you can clearly observe, yes, there's a difference in the color of meat okay. uh, between this yeah. and the ones that are purely fed on uh, grain. Yes. Yeah, so this is a much richer color yes. and also very dense. Yes. So the others are quite pale. Mm -hmm. And also the other difference would be the nutrient content in these birds yes. is a bit different okay. from that because uh, here we have uh, higher levels of iron, yes. higher levels of selenium mm -hmm. and uh, I think overall mm -hmm. it's more delicious compared to the other birds that uh -huh. uh, we get from uh, the cage system. Ah, okay. Yes. So that, that it, it certainly helps with the quality of uh, uh, meat being produced yes the quality is definitely higher and the taste too yes and the taste is richer mm -hmm. so i think that essentially means uh you also have better quality birds in terms of uh, pricing compared to the other cage, cage oh. birds oh, okay yes and uh, in terms of weight yes does this now uh, add a bit of weight faster or what exactly is happening to uh because these ones look a bit bigger than uh, one kg right yes so uh since uh, the azola that we have here and also the black soldiers like give a lot of protein yes we find that you have uh, uh birds that have higher dressed uh, dress weight mm -hmm. compared to the cage birds so mm -hmm. here at uh, eight weeks you can get birds that do up to 1.5 to 1.8 kilos of dress weight mm -hmm. compared to the cage birds that uh, will mostly be doing 1.2 to 1.3 kilos. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So, on a weight point of view, I think we have also better quality. Yeah. So, I'd like to, to mm -hmm. discuss uh, the market question because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, every farmer, the, one of the biggest nightmares, yes. uh, average small scale farmer is facing. Mm -hmm. is uh, a consistent market okay yeah so how exactly do you deal with your with, with that uh, question here okay so i think for the products that we sell to our external customers yes we try to do as much marketing as possible okay and uh for that we try to identify the kind of market that you're targeting at the products yes yeah so our instance would be that mm -hmm. we we are trying to get that niche market that mm -hmm. are able to consume only past the pasture-raised birds. Yes. Yeah. So once we are able to identify the kind of uh, target market that we can give the pasture-raised birds to, mm -hmm. at least it's easier for us to be able to sell the products. Okay. Yes. So, so there's a, a growing um, demand for pasture-raised. Yes, uh, that's birds. right. Yes, so I think uh, as a general view, mm -hmm. we find that more people are, are getting health conscious yes. and uh, trying to 
stay away from the cage bugs yes and also from a point of uh, animal welfare point of view yes because most people argue that the cage birds don't have a lot of space to move around yes so they're not really growing mm. in a very nice conducive environment okay but these ones have the space to move around yes they can lie around and eat and drink and just play so it's easier to be able to sell this product yes uh, with the animal welfare product. this is the closest you can get to free range yes yeah this, this is basically free range yes uh, on a cage yes yeah. <laughs> basically free range but on a cage yeah. yes i think the only challenge we would say we have here yes is that we are just next to the national park oh yes yeah so the biggest problem will be predators mm -hmm. like uh, we have sometimes hyenas oh, okay. or maybe baboons from the park uh -huh. so that's why we chose instead of just doing a free range mm -hmm. we chose to at least do the movable coops yes yeah that way you can keep the wild animals away i think we can also roll back to the point of feeding yes where we also have a lot of black soldier fly that we supply to the birds. Oh, yes. Yeah, because uh, it also has a high level of uh, proteins. Mm -hmm. And since we are substituting uh, other items like fish meal and soybean meal, mm -hmm. which is uh, highly competitive between humans and animals, yes. we use the black soldier fly instead. Yes. Yeah, so Pro protein is very expensive in, uh, yes. in grain form in Kenya. Exactly. Currently. Yeah, so if you're able to at least outsource protein that is not costly mm -hmm. and uh, use it for the birds, mm -hmm. then I think it's easier for you to put down the cost of production. Yes. Yes. So in terms of uh, efficiency and management of the uh, of the movable coops, yes. how easy is it or how efficient is it mm -hmm. uh, to be moving it around as opposed to having a permanent structure mm -hmm. with another permanent shade where mm -hmm. they can maybe go and uh, experience sunlight okay and then go back into a, a permanent coop yeah i think uh, this one is efficient in many ways mm -hmm. uh first i'd mention that uh, since we move it every two days yes whatever chicken droppings we have from this house yes are able to be spread within this area yes and grow out the grasses easily yeah. then uh, also uh, it's easier for us to move the cages because uh, you don't necessarily have to lift mm -hmm. you just uh, we have some axles yes. just along the the length of it uh -huh. that way you can just attach some wheels and oh, push okay. it easily oh, okay yeah so it's easier to move compared to the housing you see uh for the permanent housing yes uh for the permanent housing it's a bit of a challenge because you have to constantly make sure that you clean out the house but uh for this you do not have to be cleaning out the house. Instead, mm. you just uh, leave the manure wherever it is mm -hmm. for it to be able to function as a nutrition for the for the grass. Ah, okay. Yes. So, so it's movable. It's quite. It's easy to move. Yeah. Yes, this is easy to move. Yeah. I think these are the kinds of wheels yeah. that we use. You First, touch it on the, in the e corners and yes. push it. And push it, that's right. Okay. Right. And uh, you have a couple of them, the movable structures, eh? Yes, we yeah. have quite a number. Yeah. So that will help us a lot if you want to separate the different batches of chicken. Okay. Yeah, so when one batch is growing out, mm -hmm. you have another, another batch that's just starting to, to develop in the pasture side. Okay. Yes. So these are the layers, eh? Yes, these are our layer chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, we have them for the eggs that we use for our lodge mm -hmm. and uh, for the eggs that we also supply to our different customers. Yeah. Yes, so the coops are also movable. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that we have for the, the broiler chicken. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I think the basic principle of pasture raising is uh, just similar. Yes. Yeah, except that these are the egg, the egg producing chicken. Ah. Yes. So for these ones, we try to have them on farm mm -hmm. for at least about a year, uh -huh. because that's when they're most productive. Then we can cull them out after. Oh, you 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 cull them for meat. 
Yes, oh, you can okay. cull them out for meat. Mm -hmm. So we can also use this uh, for the lodge mm -hmm. and uh, maybe just our, our neighbors ah, and okay. other uh, school outreach programs that we normally have. Ah. Yes, oh. we normally try to irrigate the pasture as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a water management system yes. where we do recycling mm -hmm. and whatever water we get from there, we're able to use for irrigation across the farm. Ah. Yes, so that's how we have uh, such lush green pasture yeah. well, and it's, also it's a lot of napier grass for the birds, yeah. for, for, for the cows. So. Yes. Now this is a nice way of uh, raising chicken. It's uh, it's almost free range. Yes, you can call it free range, modern yeah. free range. Modern kind of free ranging yeah. of birds. Yes, yeah. I think it's it's uh it's better yeah. compared to the conventional also cage system. Yes, a lot of people do either cage system or a deep litter. Yes, yeah. So we are trying to minimize the kinds of. Uh, disadvantages that you can get from those from two. those systems yes from so those now in, in terms of uh, cost yes is there a difference uh, the cost of uh, rearing the layer buds yeah the buds from uh, mm -hmm. compared to deep litter or cage system and, yes. and this yes I think it's uh, there's always a cut cost yes because uh, also again of uh, the use of uh, the Azola and black soldier fly for the birds. Yes. Then uh, supplementing that with the insects that the birds pick from uh, the grasses here. Yes. We are able to cut the cost of feeding significantly. Okay. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's that significant that you can not you notice it. Yes. Because you see again in the cage and uh, deep litter, mm -hmm. the uh, cost is relatively the same. There's not so much of a difference. Yeah. So uh, here. You're producing your 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 your, your bird at a cheaper cost. Yes, it's okay. cheaper to produce this bird, mm -hmm. so that eventually means your margins. If you are intending to sell eggs, mm -hmm. you have higher margins. Ah, okay. Yes, compared to the regular systems. Nice. Yes. Uh, this is a similar unit, eh? Yes. With uh, the chicken, but yes. for the ducks now, eh? Yeah, that's right. So uh, the ducks are basically the same principle we use mm -hmm. to rear them mm -hmm. as with the chicken mm -hmm. once they get to three weeks old mm -hmm. you're able to move them outside and uh, get them into these movable coops okay. yes so every once in a while mm -hmm. you need to move the houses for fresher pastures and uh, to be able to let them roam around to maybe get the insects okay. and also swim because uh, the waterfalls, ducks are waterfalls. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. once in a while, I think every time you let them out, they are just about to go into the water body and swim. Okay. Yes. So uh, you have a water body down below, yeah? Yes. We have a small pond mm -hmm. where we let them swim mm -hmm. and also we do propagate azola yes. that they can use to supplement also the feeding. Ah, okay. Yes. And uh, maybe check into this unit. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the poop that we moved uh, yesterday. So we are going to again move this poop tomorrow. So this is just one day in, a, in a, that particular space? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So because uh, they cause a lot of damage to the grasses. Sure. Quite sure. faster compared to the chicken. Yes, yes. Yes. So we move them more often. Yeah. yeah. So since it's already almost close of work day, mm -hmm. we just let the birds to be inside mm -hmm. and also uh, protect them from the wild animals. Okay. Then early in the morning, yes, you are able to get them out to feed and also just play around in uh, the grasses. Okay. Yes. So this is where they were. Yes. This is where they've been. Yes. And then the uh, next time. We are going to get another green space for them. It's yes. just uh, close to the fences. Yes, yes. So that uh, they can stay at least on fresh pasture. But the, the regeneration is faster. Yes. From the next paddock, I can see that it's already beginning to germinate. Yes, they regenerate quite fast, mm -hmm. especially when it rains. 
But uh, in case we have a dry spell, we always just irrigate because of uh, the presence of a water management system. Okay. Yes. Uh. So how is the market for, for the ducks? Yeah, I think uh, we are still trying to work around the market okay. for the ducks because uh, as I understand, most Kenyans are not really used to eating duck meat. Yes. More, more, most people are actually more into chicken. But we have uh, identified a kind of niche market yes. where we are able to get uh, some of our consumers who are interested in this kind of product. Okay. Yeah, so we have most of our guests at the lodge yes. who enjoy this kind of product. Yes. And uh, also some of our clients like Green Spoon, yes. which is an online uh, store yes. where we are able to just uh, sell our products and everyone else can get it from there. Okay. Yes, so we also have uh, our neighboring, uh, our neighbors uh -huh. who are also lodges yes. and also other individual customers who have a lot of interest in these products. Ah, okay. So that yes. is the meat and the eggs? Uh, we currently just do the meat yes. because we use a lot of the eggs for breeding. Ah, okay. Yes. Oh, the, 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 the ducks you, you incubate here? Yes, in we incubate our ducks in-house, mm -hmm. so we don't really need to go and get, get the ducklings yes. from uh, somewhere else. I don't even think there is uh, there's anyone selling <laughs> at, at the scale that you are operating at. No, yeah. no it's uh, very difficult to get a lot of duck eggs from yeah. outside. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. So which kind of a bird is this? Uh, the kind of a breed? Yes. Yeah, so this is a white pecking breed. Okay. Yeah, we try to select for the white pecking mm -hmm. because uh, the meat quality is quite good. Okay. And a lot of uh, customer preference mm -hmm. is uh, the white pecking compared to uh, the colored ducks. Ah, okay. Yes. So this one is bred purposely for meat? Yes, purposely for meat. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to breed for eggs, mm -hmm. there's still a good quality duck. Okay. Yeah, so it can do dual purpose, just uh, eggs and meat. Yes. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. So from the the, ba uh, the birds, that yes. is the ducks and the, and the chicken, Yes. you process them in-house. Yes, that's Can you correct. be able to take a look at the processing plant for a minute? Of course. Yes. We'll just go and check at the processing unit. Yes. And just get a general flow of how we operate. In ah, the nice. Okay. So, yeah. so this is uh, the, the Azola unit also, right in the, yes. in the middle of this paddock. This is uh, one of our Azola ponds. Yes. Uh, we use a lot of this Azola mm -hmm. to supplement our feeding because mm -hmm. of uh, the high quality protein that we're able to get from it. Yes. Yeah, so... It is a very basic kind of product mm -hmm. and it is an algae that uh, draws nitrogen from the environment. Mm -hmm. So we really do not need an added cost in producing this. Yeah, so we usually just propagate it into the ponds yes. and uh, make sure the pond is in good condition for growth of the algae. Yes. Then uh, after 10 days, mm -hmm. we are able to start harvesting this and feeding to the chicken. Ah, and do you allow the ducks into this pond? Uh, we don't allow the ducks into uh -huh. the pond because uh, they'll quickly finish the the azola within a short period. <laughs> yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we just uh, harvest the azola. Mm -hmm. Once you clean the azola, you'll just uh, air it out here mm -hmm. so that you can uh, lose all the moisture. Mm -hmm. Then it's ready to feed the birds. Ah. Yes. So you dry it here for for how long? Uh, just a few hours, maybe an hour or two, just an until two. the water has drained out. Oh, okay. Yes. Then it's mixed with the pellets. Yes, then you mix it with the chicken feed mm -hmm. and uh, use it regularly. <sighs> so this is where you process your buds, eh? Yes, so this is where we process our buds. Okay. Uh, I think in uh, production we call, it, we call it the dirty room. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, it's dirty room because this is where all, uh, the first part of processing happens. Okay. Uh, so once you get your chicken from the holding pen, mm -hmm. uh, you need to hold them there for at least uh, the night stay. 
okay. before slaughtering in the morning. Yes. Yes. So you'll uh, just get your chicken inside here. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I'll just show you the cones mm -hmm. that we put the chicken in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll get your chicken inside a cone like this. Yes. Just head down. Okay. That way they're able to drain all the blood yes. from the body. Mm -hmm. So once you cut off the neck, mm -hmm. you let the blood flow mm -hmm. to at least uh, go on for about uh, two minutes okay. before you can move the bird mm -hmm. uh, into the hot water machine. Like so. Okay. This one, eh? Yes. So, so for this, mm -hmm. we normally have a uh, hot boiled water inside. Mm -hmm. That way it makes the process of uh, removing the feathers quite easy. Okay. Yes. So we'll be in there for say another minute mm -hmm. before you now move them to the defeathering machine that we have. Yes. Uh, so this one uses a lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. So you just uh, put in your chicken and make sure that uh, you have flow of water from the top. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> once it's on, the defeathering will just automatically happen. Ah, okay. Yes. So once that is done, mm -hmm. you get your chicken from the defeathering machine and now go into cleaning it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you just have to clean the external part to get rid of any excess feathers before you can move on to the next stage. And how many process. chickens are you processing at a time? Uh, at any given day, mm -hmm. you can do about 200 to 300 birds. 200 at a, at a go? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if uh, we have, say, one order for the week, mm -hmm. that will do around uh, 300 birds, mm -hmm. we select a day that is uh, most suitable for us to do all the work, all the processing. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, like, how many people do you need to for for the process to run smoothly? Uh, I think you can do uh, at least uh, for this room alone, mm -hmm. maybe three people. Three people. One to yes. the head. Yes. The other one to one defend. to do the defeathering. Yes. Okay. And the other one at the hot water machine ah, here. Nah. Yes. So I think uh, on a good day, maybe if you don't have much to do. Mm -hmm. You can do six people six for people. the whole process. For the entire process. Yes. Nice. But sometimes when you get too busy, mm -hmm. it's okay to get more people as long as you have enough room yes. to accommodate it. Ah, yes. well, that, that's the importance of mechanizing because yes. the uh, processing 300, 200 or to 300 chicken at a go, yes. it's, a, it's a process. Yes, it's a process. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, that's it for this unit. Yeah. Then we could maybe another look at the other the feathering yes. machines right opposite. This is where most of our packaging happens. Oh, okay. Yes, so once you've uh, processed the chicken and cleaned out the internal uh, organs mm -hmm. that need to be disposed of, mm -hmm. you now get the chicken to this place mm -hmm. where you are able to drain away all the moisture Yes. and uh, then make sure that uh, you are able to package it in good time. Ah, nice. Yeah. So, so from here to the market? Yes, from oh. here to the market. Yeah, so it's a very basic unit. I think the most important thing here mm -hmm is to make sure that uh, you maintain the right temperature that you need to be able to store the meat well. Yes. So the, the temperature is conditioned? Yes, you have to condition the temperature to be very low okay. because it's meat, so you don't really want the fluctuation in temperatures. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yes. So, so thank you so much, Linda. Thank you very and, much. And uh, I've learned a lot today. Okay. And I hope I'll be able to also come another time and You're most uh, cover another topic. Okay. Yes. Asante. Okay.